Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on today's EAC webinar. Today we get to talk about creating, managing, and delivering accurate service part information. Uh, this is a piece of our business and the theory and philosophy that we bring to market around product development and a flow through an entire organization um, that's really exciting. It's one of the pieces that oftentimes is kind of hiding in the background, but it's really, really important to successful companies. Um, so I'm excited that we get to present it today. My name's Anthony Byrol. I'm the marketing manager here at EAC Product Development Solutions. I will kind of be in the background monitoring questions and things as they come in. Today's presenter is Todd Liebenau. He's a technical account manager for EAC and a general wealth of knowledge, whether you're talking about service and part information, um, mountain bike riding, or machining and CAD and anything in between. So I'm going to go through a few slides because there are some new faces in the registration list. Just kind of introduce EAC and then I'll pass things over to Todd. So EAC's mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Uh, there are many areas in product development and bringing products to market and trying to drive innovation um, that have really operated the same way for a very long time. Now, that's not to say that people can't be incredibly successful at it, um, doing the things they've always done. But there are technologies, there are processes, there are ways of thinking that are really moving the product development and innovation pendulum, you know, swinging it to the right, if you will. And we are here to make sure that our customers are taking advantage of the latest technologies and methodologies and understanding how their company works um, to get the most productivity out of every day, out of every role, um, and make sure that they're bringing the highest quality, most innovative products to market faster. Now, in our mission statement, you can see some highlighted words. You have design, manufacture, connection to things, and service. Really, if you break that down, it's design, manufacturing, and service. Connecting devices, connecting departments, connecting people, connecting customers to your product development flow, that's not really a group. It's not really a, a separate way of doing things within your organization. So what we've come to realize is we're really transforming design, manufacturing, and service with this kind of overarching power of connect. So design with the power of a connected world and enterprise, manufacturing in a connected world and enterprise, and service in a connected world of enterprise. Now, we do that by offering everything a company needs to start, maintain, and optimize the product lifecycle flow through a company. Everything from requirements capture to sunsetting a product, servicing it, and gathering feedback and information from end users. We provide training around tools, product development consulting and assessment so people can get kind of a, a baseline of where they're at and understand a map forward to improve. Uh, we provide implementation services. So any of the things that Todd demonstrates today, um, know that we have an amazing team of solution architects and implementation specialists that are ready to make these tools work in your organization like you're seeing them today. None of this is, you know, Wizard of Oz behind the curtain magic. Uh, we are a software partner of PTC and ANSYS, bringing what we consider world-class, top-tier product development solutions and data management solutions and dynamic publishing solutions to market, as well as ANSYS, which is providing um, world-class simulation and analysis tools to aid on the design side, virtual prototyping, and um, generating of analysis reports to validate designs. And then we have our engineering services team. This is a team that really started EAC. We started as a design firm um, providing services, and it's still the core of our business today. Whether people need help um, with simple design, just a simple part of the mechanical design or electrical design or industrial design, all the way to modern current forward thinking design, let's call it design 2.0 where people are looking to develop smart connected proof of concepts, products, connecting up their manufacturing line. Our engineering team is here to help with all of that. And encompassing all of this, again, is our connected product consulting and technologies. So making sure that as we are bringing things to market and providing innovative product development tools, 
we're helping people build a strategy and a success map around you know diving in headlong into this connected world that we're all living in and making sure they're capitalizing on opportunity so that is all i had todd i will pass things over to you and let right. you know. <clears throat> sounds good let me mash one more button here i'm going to do the f5 thing just to kind of uh give us a roadmap for where we're going to go today um so we're already probably familiar with creating the the cad data in something like uh, creo parametric but then what are we going to do with that downstream well our goal today is to talk about uh what you can do with that cad data using some other tools from ptc specifically uh, illustrate and the windshield service parts and our end deliverables will potentially be things like uh you know published documents things that get printed out and and uh, put into a service uh, bulletin or, or a, a document or it could even be electronic delivery but how do we get there, right? We're gonna uh, start off with some things in, in uh, Creo and some windshell things to kind of uh, start the process and, and look at things in Illustrate. Um, and then we'll uh, manage uh, things in our service uh, uh, parts catalogs uh, and then kind of go from there. How do we get there? First thing is, is we need to talk about the service parts or the service uh, downstream deliverable uh, bill of material from engineering. And so we're gonna show you some bomb transformation capabilities. Uh, and show that that actually links back to the CAD uh, data, right? So it's not like we have to recreate something new or start over again. We're gonna link directly back to that original CAD model. And then from there, we're gonna create parts lists, right? So we'll be showing you this live. Again, I'm just giving you sort of an overview roadmap of where we're going. Uh, some additional capabilities, we're gonna be able to create interactive uh, illustrations. So it doesn't have to be uh, just a PDF, right? You can uh, publish this out to uh, uh, to web pages and have dynamic and interactive uh, uh, things that, that your customers can uh, utilize and, and access the information. Uh, here we're looking at specific part uh, information, right? So we can drill down on that. And then uh, dynamic publishing, right? So it's again, it's not just a, uh, a Word document or something like that, uh, or a paper document that, that you might print out. So we'll start the process by looking at uh, this crankshaft. And, uh, you know, this is a typical view as it looks from the design standpoint so it's all checked in and the thing i want to bring to your attention here to start with is that we're looking at this in the scope of the design right so this is as it looks uh the cad engineer designers put this assembly together and now what we want to do is just to kind of take a look around at this guy and you know just kind of investigate it so we get the standard kind of windshield functionality as far as interacting with the objects i can pick on them in the screen they're going to light up over here in my structure and I can you know kind of work back and forth and see the attributes that are associated with the different components and you know so it's basic uh, standard kind of windshield functionality to start with um, what do we, this is the design bill material so the thought process is we're going to transition and use this as our starting point um, to get into the manufacturing and, and uh, service bill material so how do we do that we're going to go to the actions uh, for this and we're going to go ahead and we're going to check this thing out we're going to open this thing out here in the service associative part structure browser that's kind of a mouthful but that's the tool that we're going to use and we're going to go ahead and uh, show you what we can do here using that we're going to get this other window that pops up and this is going to be sort of an ab comparison right so we're going to start off here with the object on the upstream view right this is the design view of the objects so we go ahead and take a look at the visualization and the first thing we're going to do here is is uh, create a downstream view of that so if you think of um, the the process flowing from design through manufacturing or design to service we, that's kind of a, a flow process and we're going to create a new downstream view of that object and so we've got several different options we can create either for manufacturing or for service but we're going to do this uh, in the scope of service for right now so we'll go ahead and accept that and this is going to build out this um, uh, top level assembly and bring over that some of the information we're going to go ahead and start to see what we have uh, on our service side so great we've got uh, a comparison now between the design on the left hand side and the service on the right hand side and so you can see we got the visualization, but now we want to start breaking things up and say, well, we're not going to perform service on all of the items that are in that object. So we want to, we kind of want to uh, selectively focus uh, what we're going to do service on. So we're going to go ahead and say we want to bring the the flywheel and this crankshaft, and we're just going to go ahead and say we want to copy those from our design side and just bring those over into service. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and paste them. It's pretty simple, just copy and paste. And see, this is actually building out this. Um, different bomb structure, right? So now we're building out a service specific bill of material uh, for that assembly. So if we go ahead and take a look at this in the equivalency tab, right? Just to kind of prove that this really is the same object just in the design view versus a manufacturing view. If I go ahead and click on this crankshaft, down here we're looking at the crankshaft and we have this in the design state over here. And the same thing over here, if we look at the crankshaft, it really is the same object looking back and forth between the two. 
so if we go back to the visualization and just kind of see what we have, you can see now that the part has moved, the crankshaft and that flywheel assembly has moved from the design side. Think of it as consuming it. We've moved it from the design side over into our service bill material. So now the next thing is if we go ahead and take a look at the, the uh, connecting rod, we want to bring that over, right? So if we pick on this connecting rod, it's going to bring all of them over all at once. Well, that's not necessarily what we want to do, right? Uh, we might want to break that up and use what's called occurrences, right? So we're going to bring over just one set of the connecting rod because there's obviously multiple components that are underneath there. We want to bring over uh, one set occurrence of that. So what that's effectively going to do is let me pick individual sets of the information. So if we go ahead and take a look at this connecting rod, we can expand that open. So there's now there's multiple copies of that. There's four connecting rods because we've got a four-cylinder engine. We can pop this open and see what's underneath there. We've got the connecting rod and all the other subcomponents that are underneath there. So now we can pick specific instances of that. And we're going to go ahead and, and uh, work on building out a specific set of information on the services side. So that's uh, kind of what we're going to start with here. And what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, create a, a new place for that to land over here. So we're going to uh, create a, a new object for that. Um, we're going to insert a new object over here. And we're going to create a, an item for that. To, uh, that's the place where we're going to bring our, our uh, connecting rod information. Hang on just a second here. All right, so we're going to create a new object here at this top level. Here's where we're going to create our new object. I'm going to insert a new item right here. So think of it this way. I'm, I'm going to build a kit, right? So this is kind of a new item that I'm going to put together. We're going to make a new part at this level, and we're going to call this thing the uh, piston and connecting rod. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and set this up as a serviceable kit. And I can make that be serviceable by default, and we'll go ahead and just finish that out. And we'll load that information back in. So now I'm just going to go back in and add that in as an existing item. And I'm just going to go search for that here. So we're going to type in piston. Do a quick search on that guy. And we'll just add him back in. So we're effectively building out this new structure underneath here. So that's something, it's a new object that I've created, and this is ultimately where I'm going to take these connecting rods and uh, bring over the information from the connecting rods and the piston and the rings that go along with that into a serviceable type item. So I'm going to create some multiple items underneath here, right? So go ahead and create this, and I'm going to say, let's make some multiple items inside here. And in this case, it's also going to be a, a parts. We're going to go ahead and say next, and this is going to give me the opportunity to create multiple things in one step. So we're going to create a connecting rod kit. And we'll go ahead and we'll create the next thing, which is going to be our piston head. If I can type, we will, piston. And the next thing, we'll have a ring set. All right, we'll go ahead and create those items. Okay, so they're created, then I'll just go back and add them into my assembly here. In this case, we're just going to insert an existing item. And we're going to say the thing we want to add here is what we just built, connecting rod. Do a quick search on that. And we're going to go grab the right one here. We just created this guy. We'll bring him in. And so you can see I'm just building out this structure. Same thing here. We'll go and add in the other couple of components that we just built. That's going to be the uh, piston head kit. And we'll grab that. And then the last one is we'll grab that ring set and we'll bring that in too. And we'll bring that 
OK, so that gives me a place to put things from my uh, design assembly. OK, so if we go back to the visualization, we can see what, what we have here, and see what the process is going to be. So again, on this side, we have just our, our uh, piston set. And on this side, we just have our, our uh, crankshaft and our flywheel. So if we go ahead and select this guy here, the connecting rod, if we go ahead and say, I want to grab all the items underneath that connecting rod, and we're just going to go ahead and say, we're just going to copy those items. And we'll bring them back over here into this connecting rod kit. And we're just, we'll just paste them. Simple copy and paste. It'll bring those items back underneath there. So you can see there we've added them back in. And we'll uh, repeat that process for uh, the flywheel. No, sorry, not the flywheel, the uh, piston head. So we'll go ahead and pick on that. You can pick it from the graphics window or from the tree, either way. And now this case, I want to be a little bit specific about what I select here. I don't want to grab uh, the rings along with this. I'd like to do this separately. So I want to grab the piston. Uh, the retainer pieces, and then the pin. And I'm going to leave the rings as a separate item. So we can go ahead and just uh, grab those guys. We'll copy that, paste that into our piston head. And then the final step, we'll go ahead and grab the rings that are associated with that, because that's all that's left there. And we'll go ahead and uh, grab those items. And we'll paste that into our ring set. And if we wanted to, we could go ahead and add other things like maybe grease or Loctite or something else like that. But that's the general process for bringing things back into uh, our, our service bill material. So again, what have we got? Uh, if we go ahead and show all the items that are here, right? So this is going to show me everything. Now, this is as it looks from the design standpoint. This is the downstream view. This is what it looks like for the service standpoint. So now we've got a service specific bill of material um, that we've configured and started from our design view and created that into uh, the service bill of material. All right, so um, any questions at this point, Anthony? No, nothing's coming to the queue yet. Um, but I guess the question that we didn't really answer in the intro is why is this important? Like what you're doing right now is building out service kits and service packages completely associative with the actual CAD files. There's no throwing over the wall, there's nothing. That's the primary benefit here, right? The accuracy of information and ease, right. really. Yeah, I mean, really, you're working with the same data set, it's just a different view. I mean, and that's really just a, probably as simply uh, as I can put that, it's just a different view of that. So you can see that these items are checked out as I built out the new items, their, their status is showing me that they're checked out. So that's the next step in the process is I need to tell the system, hey, I'm done with that. And I can go ahead and do my uh, check-in process on that. So if I just take a look at the items that I have checked out, it's gonna show me all those items. We just go ahead and grab all those guys and we'll just uh, say we wanna check them in. We'll go ahead and apply that uh, to that status to all of them, and that'll check those back in, and we can close that. And that's really it. That's the process of using this uh, uh, part structure browser. I mean, it's got a really fancy name. It's a service associative part structure browser. It tells you what it is and what it does. It lets you restructure or build uh, your service or uh, manufacturing bill of material uh, based off of your design uh, bill of material. So that's really all we're going to do here in this tool. So let's go see what we've done, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and close that and navigate away from that. I've got a couple of extra windows here that I won't need for now. So we'll clear the decks here a little bit. So this brings us back to this top level node that we started with, right? So this is my design view of that item. Well, let's go ahead and take a, a different view of the world. Let's go ahead and change our filter. And now let's look at this from the service standpoint. So this basically shows then that this really is the same thing that we're looking at, except now that it's the service view of the world, right? So we go ahead and, and select on this. This is actually publishing this information for me in the background. So um, take a second here for this to kind of update while this is happening. So go ahead and click on our visualization piece. So publishing, what that process is, is that it's publishing the thumbnails and all the other things in the background there that Winchell um, uh, creates for you so you can actually see what it is you're working on. Um, so this is the service view of the world, and this is all the information that we just created, right? So here's our service our information for the piston and connecting rod and the, the different pieces that go underneath there. So it's, like I said, just a different view of the world. Uh, this is what service would see uh, as compared to what design engineering is going to see for that. So what do we do with it now from here? Well, we're going to go ahead and pick on the connecting rod, uh, the service kit that we made, and we're going to go ahead and generate a, a parts list from that. So right here, we're going to go and say, let's create a a list of parts for those items, and it's going to go ahead and, and uh, grab that information. 
And this is the parts list that we created for that. So it's its own separate item inside Windshow. We can go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, and this is where we are now. We're looking at this parts list that's generated for that. And it's just this set of data that we created in that kit. So it takes just a second here for that to load up. We're doing everything on my laptop here. So take just a minute for that to catch up. So here we are. There's that, uh, that uh, uh, piston and connecting rod service kit that we just built. So it's got its own separate attributes, and we've got items inside here. So right, we have item numbers uh, that indicate the, the both the quantities and the uh, the specific item numbers. So we'll use that in our illustration, which we're going to get to in just a minute, right? So the uh, this is the um, the visualization. We looked at the items over here, the piston connecting rod. So this shows me the structure of that. Um, so this is the items that we just built in. Uh, maybe a parallel view to what you're seeing over here, but um, just to kind of show you the other items that are behind uh, or what are created for you automatically. You might have replacement parts that you uh, associate with that, or you might have supplementary parts, things that, that you want to include along with that kit. You can add those or reference those here. And again, the attributes, it's just the metadata, the information about uh, this item as, uh, as we built it. So if we go back here to the um, item list, um, this is the default uh, numbering scheme. And if I want to change that, because I'm going to include this in a drawing that we're going to get to in a minute or two, right? So we go back here. I'm going to change this item number just to show that that's different. We'll change the numbering scheme here from two to four to six, just so we can see that we're actually making some changes here. We'll go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go and say, hey, let's uh, set that for my default view. And what that's going to do is actually uh, set that and notice that this has actually checked out that item. And then the next step is, of course, we want to check that in and, and update that information. So again, we made some changes in Windchill to that item, and we're going to update that. And we'll just go ahead and take the, the default for that. We don't need to add any comments for that right now. We'll just navigate away from that. OK, so back to our um, uh, related objects. We'll take a look at what's uh, going on here with that. So here's that parts list that we've created. So here's my bill of material that we just created down here. And so from that, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at, uh, I think the next step is we'll, we'll look at uh, creating an illustration from that. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do that. We'll go and, and uh, take a look at this parts list. Let's do that first. Let's look at this parts list. So again, just specific information for that that object, and and uh, this is different, right? So this is the parts list that we just created uh, off of that item uh, a minute ago. All right. Uh, pause for another set of questions. If you've got any, Anthony. Uh, nothing at this point. I'll let you know if someone comes in. Okay. Uh, let's take a look here. I'm looking for, let's go back one page. Oh, this is the guy right here. So here's our published content. So that's uh, the other piece here is that it does take a minute or two here for that uh, publish uh, information to catch up because what we're doing down here, this is the published contents for that. So if we looked at this, this is actually going to be a, a PDF of that information that was just there. So this, if we looked at this in uh, Creo View, this is uh, basically going to be uh, our parts list specific to that information that we were just looking at. So it's the table uh, of information that's going to get included along when we, when we create the drawing. All right, so back here to the parts list. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do here is um, go back here and create a, a document for that. So now is the point in the demonstration where you're kind of leaving the the CAD centric PLM systems that people are used to and jumping into uh, dynamic publishing, correct? Yep. So what I'm going to do now is I've actually opened up a um, my uh, workgroup manager, right? So this is the workgroup manager where I'm actually looking at this object, and this is uh, I'm doing this because this is where I'm actually connect connecting up to uh, Illustrate. Right, so here's uh, here's my structure uh, for that. So this is the same object we were just looking at. If we looked at our, our representations and annotations for that. Um, so here's uh, our item. So if we take a look at this parts list, this is what I was just looking at a minute ago. If we take a look at this file, right? So this is that PDF of that information that's right there. Go ahead and close this guy. That was uh, PDF that we were just looking at. So that's a document that's created for me automatically. It's kind of referencing that uh, that table format for that item. And so that's the items that we just created in that set. 
Uh, and I want to go back here one page. Now, that table is something that's really familiar. I think anyone who's purchased anything that's serviceable recognizes that at the back of a manual, there's always tables of parts that can be purchased to service specific parts of a product, um, whether it be a snowblower or, you know, piston or engine or connecting rod, right? Um, the, the difference here is no one manually keyed that list. That was created from your service kit that you built in the, the PLM system. Right. Yep. So that's just reading off that information. So the one thing that was different was, is I manually changed the, the index number, the callout number for that. Uh, but that was the only thing that, that was changed. And I might do that because I know what I'm going to do when I get to the point where I'm creating the illustration, which is where I am now. And I'm going to go ahead and create this illustration. And I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, let's give that a name. And this is going to be the piston and connecting rod illustration. Sorry, you guys have to sit through my painful typing. Uh, so again, we're gonna use Creo Illustrate for that. And we're gonna go ahead and build this out here. Uh, the input source is not gonna be empty, but it's actually gonna be this parts list representation that we just created, right? So we're gonna go ahead and reference that. And here's where I'm gonna go and tell it what to look at when it creates that, that uh, drawing. So we're not gonna look at the PDF that we just created, but rather this uh, in input that uh, got published for me when I, when I checked that item in. So this is where I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, let's go and grab that, uh, that, that model. And it's gonna load that up for me. And then I can go ahead and start creating my uh, illustration off of that. So here we are, it's just launching uh, Creo Illustrate for me. And let's go ahead and say, yep, I wanna accept that. It's just updating a file. And let's maximize that so we can kind of see what we're seeing on the screen. And it's just loading in the information now. All right, and this is asking me, this is an important question to, to understand or to understand what it's asking us here. Um, this is managing the link to this information. What this is saying is, hey, how do you want to know, how do you want to be informed uh, about the information when it changes for this object? So this is saying, you have the option to automatically always update without being pestered uh, with the update. So if there's a design change, you go from three rings to four, you, you know, change the diameter of the piston or, you know, a design change of any kind. Do you want the system to automatically always update that or do you want to update after being prompted only? We'll go ahead and accept the default here of update after confirmation only. And here we are, we've got our model that's pulled up, right? So here's the, the index numbers that I typed in. We changed that numbering scheme from one to two to three, uh, to two, four, and six, right? Just to kind of show that we have made some, some changes here to that. And so now we can go ahead and, and look at what we can do with this inside uh, Illustrate. Well, we can take a look at a lot of different things, but to start with, let's kind of create an exploded view of this a little bit. Let's back up and give ourselves some space. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick on some different things. I'll pick on the ring set. And if we say, hey, let's transform that up just a little bit, we'll grab the axis and move that up. And we'll do the same thing here with the piston head. I'm just gonna control select that and we'll drag those things up all together and just kind of explode things out a little bit so I can see what's going on. Now, I just need to kind of pick uh, my annotations and kind of move them around a little bit. If I just single click them, I'll be able to move them a little bit more easily instead of double clicking them. And we'll grab this over here and move them kind of simultaneously if I can you know, pick more than one at a time, things like that. Um, maybe those uh, colors are a little bit dark, so we can go back in and pick on a part, and let's say, let's let's modify some of the colors there for that. So we can change this, and let's make that be sort of that lighter gray color, so you can kind of see what's going on. And let's change the rings, too, as long as we're there. We'll change the color of that, uh, kind of partial to yellow, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then, I don't know, we'll ch maybe change this guy here to more cyan color, so you get a feel for, for what's happening there with that. Last thing on the annotations, right? We can go ahead and say, well, let's uh, kind of do some changes here with respect to that. Um, if we pick uh, these multiple different annotations, we can say, hey, let's go back to here and let's align the center so they kind of line up that way. And maybe we want to distribute them uh, kind of vertically so they kind of even out the display, right? So it kind of changes that. Uh, kind of cleans up my screen a little bit. We can change the attach points for that too. You probably saw me moving things around a little, a little bit with that so they don't have to just land right in the middle of the part. You can put that kind of anywhere you want, as long as it's attached to the part. All right, so we have that. And then let's see, other things we might want to do with that. Oh, let's change the display of that too, because that's sometimes, uh, we want to change the different render modes with that. We can uh, do a shaded illustration. Uh, we can change a white shaded. So just changing sort of the look and feel for this. Again, this is a tool for creating the illustrations, um, for, uh, the images that get put into the different documents. So. We want to maybe clean that up a little bit and change how that how that gets displayed.
it's a tool for doing that without having to trace anything. That's a key point here. You're again, just like your e bomb and S bomb kind of creation and comparison. This is leveraging the CAD data and in intellectual properties or intellectual property that your engineering group has already created your CAD files. Yep. It's, it's already right there. Yep. So uh, let's see. The other things we want to do is kind of get this dressed up a little bit. We're going to go ahead and change the size of this to U.S. letter. Let's go ahead and fit that to window. And then let's change the orientation for that to landscape. And then we're just going to kind of uh, change the size of this a little bit. And I can just kind of, I'm just kind of dragging and panning and moving this around. So think in terms of kind of how you might want to uh, arrange those items on the screen, right? So you can kind of uh, move things around and uh, kind of change the, the the layout of the page. And again, we're getting ready to kind of uh, check this in and publish that. All right, so that's probably as much as I want to do here for this. The next step then is to go back to Windchill and let everybody know that we've made a change to that. We're going to go ahead and do an auto check-in. And that's going to take that information and go ahead and, and bring that back into the system uh, so everybody else can kind of see the, uh, the uh, changes that we made. So you can see the status here. It's actually completing that check-in. And that's pretty much all we need to do in the, on the Illustrate side. So we'll go ahead and, and close that out for now. Uh, then we're going to go back here to our, our we've done our check-in, and then we're just um, waiting here for a minute for the publishing to kind of catch up with us. And we're going to go back to our windshield page because we're done here. This is the same look, uh, right, uh, as far as our browser, but this is actually the, the work group manager where I'm doing my work as the illustrator. Let's go back to this page, kind of where we started. So we're back here at our, our parts list. And we go back to our structure here, and uh, let's look at our representations and annotations And while this actually gets published. Okay, so this is the, the parts list for Dynamics. So this is the stuff then that we've actually, um, if we want to look at this in Creo View, we can pop this open, and this is going to show me that uh, basically the published representation that we just made. Of course, I have to log in. We'll go ahead and do that. And this will launch, and this is asking me which version I, I need to probably set that here. So uh, I make sure that I'm looking at the right place for the server. This typically not required, but um, I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. So I'll need that license. So here we are. This is the, the published representation of that. So when we drop in here initially, we're going to see that the, that's another object that we can look at. So again, think uh, downstream user. So this is no longer the, the CAD user, the designer. This is somebody who may, might be on the shop floor and purchasing or in someplace else, and they can they can see the information. They can measure it, mark it up, do whatever they want with it without having to stop somebody in, in, the, uh, in the CAD office to kind of see what's going on with that. All right, um, let's see, what else do we want to look at here? The published uh, representation for this, um, we can take a look at this guy. This is the uh, view of that. Go ahead and take a look at this file, update this. Okay, so yeah, we've looked at that. I was just thinking that when I update that, let's actually refresh this page and make sure that that publishing is actually caught up. So our parts list structure, we can open that guy up in Creo View. And same thing here. Yep, okay, so we're just there. All right, I think that's all we wanted to do there on that, and we've looked at the PDF. So next thing is this, we're gonna take a look at where do we go next with this, right? So if we look at this, we've created uh, some illustrations, we've created some uh, bill of material information. The next thing is, is we want to go ahead and take a look at this from a publications uh, standpoint. So if we look at the publication structure, think in terms of uh, deliverables now for the documentation, right? So we've got a couple of these that are already in place. We're going to create a brand new publication structure. In this case, it's going to be the Synergy Race Car Parts Book, because that's the name of this project. It's the uh, Synergy Race Car. So we'll go ahead and give it a name. Parts book. Okay, and we'll go ahead and do that. So I think that's all we need to do there. Um, yep, we'll go ahead and finish that out. And this is just asking me which language, and we're going to use English, so we're okay with that. Navigate away from that. And so now we've got this new parts book that we've created. So let's go take a look at it. So here's uh, the top level, the details page. Let's go to the structure and see what we've got. And to start with, 
uh, we're not going to have anything because we need to kind of build this out. And obviously, you could template this out, but uh, we're going to show you kind of the process for, for building it up. So uh, much like you do with uh, CAD documents and other types of objects, we can create a, a structure for these items. So we're going to go ahead and say, let's insert a new, uh, let's start with a table of contents, right? We're going to go ahead and do that. That's going to add in my table of contents. Same thing here, we'll add in a new index. So you can kind of see the structure. We're building out the, the chapters and whatnot for the uh, the, uh, the book that we're creating. Now, the next thing is, is we're going to go ahead and let's insert uh, with some new items. We're going to go ahead and create uh, an item here for, let's pick this guy right here. We're going to uh, insert a new object for, uh, in this case, publication sections, and we're going to add multiples, right? So we're going to do this. We're going to kind of build out multiple chapters all at once. And so let's go ahead and say next on this, and this is where I get to plug in the information for that. Very similar look and feel to the uh, page we were on a few minutes ago as far as creating the different um, objects in the, the part structure. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a chapter for breaks. And then next we'll go ahead and add a chapter for transmission. And finally we'll add a chapter for engine. Okay, we'll go ahead and finish that. That's all we need to do. And again, the language is English, so we'll go ahead and accept that. And we'll close those guys back out. And I'm just going to go back and insert them into the table, right? So we're going to go grab the section, and same as before, if I say breaks, go grab that. And that brings that back in, and we'll go ahead and insert two more here. You get the idea about how that works. Right, so we'll go ahead back and, and add in our transmission. And we'll grab him. And one more we'll add in the engine. So you can see I've built out the structure. So then what do I do with it from here, right? So um, I can go ahead and say, well, I've got these pre-built chapters. So you can think of it sort of as a library of modules for different sections, right? And if I want to have that be consistent across multiple different uh, uh, chapters or books, uh, I, I can build that up in one place and then leverage that information. What that allows me to do is to make change in one place and have all the rest of my documents update. Um, very similar to what you see in Creo Parametric as far as the CAD modeling, same kind of process uh, applies here to the, the workflow for creating documentation. So we're going to go ahead and say let's drill into the chassis and let's grab some brake information here. We're going to go ahead and grab the uh, anti-lock braking system and a simple drag and drop. So I'm just going to drag that and drop that into that chapter. Right, So that's going to add that information in there. We'll get close down the chassis. So the next thing we're going to go grab here is the drivetrain. And we'll grab multiple items this time. We're going to grab the gearbox and the shifters and the tail house and we'll go ahead and grab drag and drop those things right into transmission. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that. And then the last thing we'll do here is uh, we're going to go and insert from uh, our parts list that we just built. So what I'll do here is select on the engine, and I'm going to do a right click instead of a drag and drop. I'm going to go ahead and uh, insert an existing, in this case it's going to be uh, our uh, info element, and we'll go grab our parts list. So we'll go gra grab the uh, piston and do a quick search on that. Oh, right, it needs to be a parts list. I said I said it, but didn't pick it, right? So we're going to pick our parts list, and then we'll go find that piston and connecting rod uh, object that we just built a few minutes ago, and we'll add that back in. So it's going to add that uh, right to here. Yeah, let's make sure we add that back in. Let's add an existing info element there. And make sure that this is the parts list. And let's go back to that page. There. This is what I wanted right there to add that back in. Okay, so we'll add that item back in, and then the next thing is, is uh, we probably want to change the order of things because the table of contents probably should be the first thing in our document. So we'll go ahead and grab these three sections and just drag them right below the table of contents, right? So you see a nice little cursor that pops up, and now I can rearrange my book uh, like that. Pretty easy to do. And then the last thing I might want to do here is to say let's insert um, a brand new item, right? We can add in a, um, in this case, we're going to add an info element for um, 
a new section uh, for introduction. So if we pick our information element list, uh, let's see here, where's the guy I'm looking for? Publication section, table count, no. What I'm wanting to do here is insert new. If I pick on the right item, there we are. And in this case, this is going to be our introduction section. Uh, get the right section here, insert a new. This is what I want right here. And I'm just going to pick the type here, which is going to be an Arbitext uh, dynamic document. And the template we're going to use is going to be this guy right here, a uh, topic. And this is just going to be introduction. We'll go ahead and say OK. And add that back in. We just do a refresh on our page to make sure that that's updated. OK, um, so that uh, item. Um, got created, doesn't look like it got uh, put in there. So let's go ahead and in insert that uh, here again. A lot of moving pieces in what everyone's seeing today. It's worth, it's worth noting, Todd, you're doing a great job. I know you yeah, have so there's many different systems running on your laptop right now. Right. So here's the introduction. So I created it, uh, but I uh, did not get it uh, inserted directly. So I just had to go back and reinsert it as an existing item. So here we are. Here's this object, right? So um, if we go ahead and take a look at our info elements list. So uh, this is the document that we're going to look at, or this is a piece of the document, I should say, that we're going to look at. So if we go ahead and uh, click on this guy, we can go ahead and open this up in Arbitex Editor, which I've got over here in this window. So this is my Arbitex editor, and I'm connected to Windchill. So I'm just going to go ahead and browse, right? I'm going to go ahead and search for that intro window, or for that introduction section. Go ahead and do a search on that. And sorry, that popped up in another window. So here's the item that we were just looking at. So I'll go ahead and say, yeah, hey, let's go ahead and view that, that document. So it's uh, fetching over that structure for that intro uh, piece that we just looked at. And let me just kind of close out these other th things. This is just my uh, search browser for Arbitex, so I'll just go ahead and put that away. And we can go ahead and close that. So here's here's the Arbitex editor. So here's where I get to uh, you know, edit and change the, the actual documentation that goes along with that, just to kind of show you what's going on here. So a lot of kind of a busy window, but this uh, for, for people that are in uh, tech publishing and that kind of stuff, it's uh, all... Uh, pretty familiar stuff, right? So this is uh, all based on XML, so that's why we have all the tags and stuff that are up in place. Um, so this is just showing me the document that that's uh, right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, click on this template, and uh, right now if I try and delete this uh, it's or change this, it's going to complain, right, because I haven't actually checked it out. So let's go ahead and actually check that item out. I still need to let Windchill know, right, because we're working in that managed environment. So now I've checked that out. If I would have tried to delete something without checking it out, I get a message. I just wanted to bypass that. So we're going to go ahead and say delete that. And then uh, we'll go back in here in a short description. And uh, because you guys have already experienced my painfully uh, terrible typing skills, I'm going to uh, copy some text from a different editor and just to paste that in right here. So it's just a simple copy and paste. I don't want to drag you through the process of you know typing all that in. So we have that. Uh, so that little description that gets plugged in there. Uh, so then other things we can do uh, as far as our, our document, um, we can go ahead and, and add some information here, other images, uh, things like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we'll go down here in the, in the uh, first paragraph and we can go ahead and type in some information. Uh, let's say uh, we want to put in um, another piece of information here as far as uh, detailed information and other text and hey, point back to, uh, to a website for some other information. We can go ahead and do that. Um, we can do that right here say
right? Uh, then you can go back in and, and uh, you can right click on this thing and you can say, uh, let's put in some other information here. Uh, I want to uh, put in some other things like maybe I want to put in a, a URL or some other XREF information or something like that. So I can go ahead and do that and uh, add the image in and, and uh, uh, you know, build out my document from there. Again, uh, talking for about 45 minutes, any questions that have popped up along the way, Anthony? No, I think you've been doing a great job answering people's questions automatically as you've worked through the flow. Uh, one thing I would okay. like to bring up on this on this part in the Arbortext editor, um, the reason some people may not have seen kind of dynamic XML publishing editor like you're using, um, mm -hmm. the reason people would want to use a tool like this versus a Word or um, a static InDesign instance or FrameMaker that hasn't been set up to use dynamic elements um, is because what you're doing when you're writing this, this kind of odd looking tag ridden content is you're preparing the kind of the framework, the bones that are on the back end of a publication, of a document, to be published in any number of ways. Because all it is is the, the content elements and tags that say this element is this kind of thing. So when you publish it on a mobile phone, um, it'll kick out HTML. When you publish a PDF, you can kick out a perfectly formatted PDF with one set of inputs. You're not having to create a mobile web version, a desktop web version, a PDF, um, and a printed book. So that's the beauty of this kind of, this way of creating content using tags and XML. Right. So there's more to it than that, right? So it's tags and XML and other, you know, things that you can kind of tie together. In this case, I was looking at that modifying the attributes for that link, right? So I can change the scope of that. For example, if I want that to be internal or external, if I want to change the format, I might want to change that and say, hey, that's going to be a web type thing. So I can put in that HTTP, right? Um, so I can go ahead and, and uh, do that kind of thing here. So that turns that into a link piece of information. Uh, if I wanted to, to uh, put in some other graphics, I can go ahead and do that, right? So we put this guy right here. I can say, hey, let's go. Uh, let's go and insert some graphics. So we can say insert. We'll go grab a graphic. And again, this is going to pop up a, a search tool for me here in a second. All right. So here's my search tool. In this case, I want to go ahead and do a search. Um, look in and where do I want to actually do my search there for that? I want to actually look in my uh, PTC server. And the thing that I'm going to look for is going to be Top Dog. So let's go. That's the name of this top level vehicle. So Top Dog. So go ahead and do a search on that. Oh, might want a wildcard there at the end, so let's go do that and go ahead and do a search on that. And over here, let's grab this stuff from over here. Here's the keyword that I'm gonna search for. We'll paste that in there and perform the search. So this will come back with uh, items over here on the right-hand side, or sorry, the left-hand side. My dyslexia is in place today. And let's see, search results. I'm not able to grab the item I want right there. I think that's the one that I want right there. It's a little tough to see, but we're gonna pick them. We'll insert that and close this out. So that now is the image for that top level vehicle, right? So that's gonna publish that out. Um, I'm not sure, I think I have a, a display thing going on there right now with my graphics in this virtual machine, so it's not showing that image. But when we publish that, that'll, that'll publish out. Uh, and of course, I can pick on the image and other attributes that I can modify along with that. So if we said, hey, let's pick on that guy and look at our, our modify attributes. Uh, if I want to change the image for that, in this case, I want that to be uh, centered, right? Uh, the uh, placement is fine. I think the, we'll hit, change that to break and the width uh, and height will make that be four inches, right? So I'm kind of scaling the document here or the image in the document. Go ahead and apply that. And then we can go back and uh, check it in. So that's all we want to do. We've got our document here with some text that we typed in. We've got an image. Let's go ahead and check that back in, right? And we could add in comments here if we want, and that will check that back in for me. So that's all, that's it. All that's, that's all the work I need to do inside Arbortex right now. Obviously, there's quite a bit more that I could do, but for now, that's that's what we'll, we'll do. So we'll go ahead and put that away. And then back to my uh, published representation. So now what we want to do is go back to this uh, item that we were just looking at, right, which is going to be this guy right here, this parts book. 
and I'm just going to wait a, a little bit here because what's happening in the background is it's creating that it's creating that book that that document uh, and sort of getting that all pulled together and getting that published for me. So if we go back here to my checkouts and take a look at what we have kind of going on here with that, we just need to do the final step here, grab these guys, entire list, click the link there, and really what I wanted to do is to highlight all four rows. So let me do this, grab all these guys, and we'll do our check-in. Right, checkouts and grab all that, and then we wanna, there we go. That's what I'm looking for is to get all those guys checked in. We'll close that. Now, same thing here. We're just basically buttoning everything up. So the check-in process is going to go ahead and do the automatic publishing for me and all that in the background. Um, so now we just need to go ahead and create our final published representation for that. And this is where the think of the final publication or the final uh, production process happens. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and, and pick on this guy right here and say, hey, here's my parts book PDF. Right, and we're going to go ahead and create this thing, and here's where we submit the, the published job. So we go ahead and take a look at this uh, published job in the background, and it'll take another minute or two, and uh, then we'll have a document that we can look at as far as our overall process. So the last step in the process is just to look at what we built, right? And if we go ahead and take a look at our uh, representations for that, uh, take just a second here for this to get all kind of bundled together. Uh, but uh, that's really it. So the last step is just to open it up and, and look at what we built. Questions at this point, Anthony? Nothing yet. I'm excited. We're, we're rounding home right now. See the finished piece, right? So if we go ahead and fit this to the page, right? So let's see, here's my fit to page, fit height, right? So uh, again, this is basically just gonna publish out. So that's the image that I was talking about. Um, it, not sure why it wasn't showing correctly in Arbitex. It's probably just a graphics thing on my virtual machine, but here's the, here's the text that we typed in, here's the link, right? And then uh, here's the, the image that goes along with that. And then subsequent pages, right? So there's our table of contents. Uh, let's actually maximize this so we can see a little bit better about what we're doing. Right, here's the transmission section. Uh, we go back down here, bill of material that goes along with that. Right, so again, all this stuff is is dynamic and it's it's associative. It's linked back to the original CAD model. So if we change a part count here, we change the number of uh, plates, the shifter main plates, right? You change that from one to two, you change your design, your documentation is gonna update for you too. So again, these chapters that we're looking at here, those are the ones that were automatically built and we just sort of, um, bolted those onto this individual structure uh, of this document that we're building. So um, you don't have to retype all that information. You can sort of compartmentalize it or modularize it to bring it together to a final um, delivered document when you're all done. Excellent. So that's what I have for you as far as, uh, you know, the, the, the set of tools that you use to create your service bill of material information and bring that all the way forward into published documentation at the end. I like it. Thank you very much, Todd. Everybody that was on today, you saw a lot of different things working together um, that allow you to take your rich CAD data from the engineering and design department and publish it all the way through to your publications. Um, one of the things to note is if something changes on the CAD file, you can propagate these changes all the way through your finished parts and make sure that you're always sending out the right documentation for products and new configurations and little changes and tweaks. Um, this is something that is incredibly valuable to organizations. Right now, it, it, it's typically a pretty tedious process. Um, so if you saw anything during today's demonstration that made you kind of go, aha, and uh, want to talk more about how exactly that works and how EAC's team can kind of put together a package and help you get this going at your organization, please reach out to us.